from the south, huh? Man, we glad you here today. Another AMA. Welcome to South, huh? Man, we glad you here today. Hello, and welcome into another Dynasty Team review here at our South Harbor. As you can tell, I'm not Mike, I'm not Adam, I'm not Eric. I'm Koopa, the guy behind the warp tool and a little bit of a master of analyzing teams that have some weird settings, some weird league parameters going on, and we've got one here for us today. So before we get into it, I just want to remind everyone that you can come over to DynastyTeamReviews.com um, or go over to the South Harmon website where you can check out all sorts of cool things. You can see the ADP. You can check. You can get access to the Warp tool. We've got a direct link to JCAP's awesome tool, the Lab, that we'll be using a little bit later. Um, if you have not signed up to the Patreon, come uh, come sign up on the Patreon, and you can also go to the store and be able to buy some of that South Harmon merch, some of those glasses that that you'll see us drinking out of sometimes. And lastly, you can go and get your own team review. You can fill it out, give us all the information that, that we need in order to be able to do it, and add it to your cart and get, it, get your team reviewed so that way you're set up for this upcoming Dynasty season. So... Now that we have all that out of the way, let's get into what this this team that we're reviewing is. So first, we need to go over a little bit of it. This is the best ball league, the infamous one from August of last year, where there was a QB hoard done, and it caused uh, our, our friend Stapa to leave the league, and somebody had to come in and take over Stapa's team. Well, our boy Slemno here, he's been a Savage member for a good amount of time. He was the one that did that QB horde. And if you look at his team now, it does not look like a QB horde kind of team. It's It it's only has two starting quarterbacks, but what it has is a lot of draft capital and, and a decent number of young players. So... I'm going to go in, we're going to start with looking at what does it take to compete in this league, and then we're going to take a look at his team and see what holes he would need to fill in order to be able to build into a competitor, and talk about some possible ways that he could get there. So let's start by going off into the warp tool. So we've got a, we've got a interesting graph here that, first of all, it's a best ball league. Um, and position-wise, we see quarterbacks and wide receivers, they are pretty close together. There's not a whole lot of differentiation between them, at least at the beginning. Once you hit a quarterback 15, it starts to drop off a little bit. So we're going to... We're going to try to keep quarterbacks in general more on that upper end before we hit that drop off. But wide receiver, this is... This is very flat for a for a warp curve at, at wide receiver, and we only have four guys that have really stood themselves out this past season, and so I really like to see that in terms of okay, I don't need to try and get your Puka Nakua's, your AJ Browns, your DJ Moore's, your Michael Pittman's because I can make those guys up out of getting a bunch of guys back here. If I need to, I can get a Jordan Addison, Jaden Reed, DeAndre Hopkins, Rasheed Rice. Like, put a bunch of those guys together, and because it's best ball, I'm not having to choose somebody into my lineup every single week. It's just inserting in, hey, this guy happened to, this was his one week this year that he's getting the 35-point game. He's in my lineup. So... I really like uh, seeing this because it gives me a lot of flexibility here at the wide receiver position. But the wide receiver position is the most valuable. And the reason I say the wide receiver position is the most valuable is because when I look at what it takes to win a championship, so I'm just going to look at weeks 15 through 17, and then we're going to look at weeks 1 through 4. 
The reason I look at those is because those are the short windows where every team is playing. Weeks 15 to 17, we see that the wide receiver line is extremely high and the quarterback line is much lower. So in a short window, having good wide receivers is extremely helpful and that's what's going to push your team over the top and win you those weeks, especially when it comes down to the championship. And then we do the same thing here weeks one through four, and we're going to see a similar story. We're going to see that, hey, having the wide receivers is the way to go. Quarterbacks are are definitely lower. Now, when I show you this, it seems a little weird. Why, when I'm looking at these two smaller windows, is wide receiver higher than quarterback? But when I look over the entire season... The quarterback is right there in lockstep with the wide receivers all the way down to, to 15. And it's because of the variance that comes at the wide receiver position. So when you're looking at a smaller window, a wide receiver has a much greater chance to have an explosive week that knocks everyone out of the park. Quarterbacks, their explosive weeks compared to their replacement level quarterback it's not as big as it is at the wide receiver position, so they aren't going to get as much warp. But quarterbacks consistently score more than the uh, than the replacement player, whereas wide receivers, they might have one week that's a 25-point week, and the next week it's a 5-point week. So they they don't get that consistent value, and so in a shorter window... You can see, oh, they had two 25-point weeks in this three-week window, and so they get a ton of a ton of warp value from that. But the quarterback, they're going to have three consistent 15-point uh, weeks, let's say. And those three consistent 15-point weeks spread out over the course of the season where you aren't having to worry about, hey, we're... Uh, is this the 25 point week or the five point week? Um, that's going to help give you a high floor and accumulate you a lot of warp over the entire season. So the way I like to look at something like this, where, Hey, we have the quarterback where it's up um it's up uh, crossing paths with, with the wide receivers over the course of a full season is creating the idea that, Quarterbacks get you to the playoffs, and then wide receivers win you leagues. And so, if you ha you need to have some solid quarterbacks in order to be able to have a good strong contender. If you're trying to maybe shoot for a first round buy, um, and you're trying to avoid that first week, you want to go ahead get the quarterback, and and have a strong foundation there. And so that's what I'm still going to recommend here for Slum Nose Team. Like, hey, I want to have some solid quarterbacks. I don't need to have a bunch of guys in the top 15 range, but I might want to have two guys in the top 15 range and two guys down here in this 18 to 25, 26, 27, somewhere in there, um, kind of on this downslope portion. And so you'll notice in this downslope portion is also a lot of guys that didn't play the full season. So you got Joshua Dobbs not playing the full season. Geno Smith missed a couple games, but he still wasn't that good. Um, Kirk Cousins missed about half the season. Joe Burrow missed a bunch. So you kind of go down here like, okay, so these guys down here in this range can be some of those backup quarterbacks. They can be some of those guys that, you're maybe a little skeptical that they're going to survive the whole season. Um, the guys like that where you're playing best ball. If they have a good week, they're going to hit your lineup. If they don't, then somebody else can take that spot. And so you just want to make sure you have enough. So I would recommend having two or three of those guys. And you get you get yourself two guys that are in up here, this top 15. Um, and then if you compare that to what Warp says in the adjusted roster construction tab, look at that. It says 4.83. And I said two, point, uh, two or three of, of those backup guys. Uh, there you go. You're, round, you're rounding out four to five quarterbacks. And that's, 
That's how I would roster construct based off of this chart. So that way you have that high floor. This is assuming, of course, you're going for a, a, you're trying to win the championship right now with the best team for this year. Then I'm going to be pumping everything I can into the wide receivers. Running backs, I still need to have some guys. So looking at this, some of how this is kind of shaken out in this league, there's a there's a down slope as to, as uh, the position goes on. There's not a clear like, hey, this is the flat range. So yes, it is worth getting some guys up here at the top and paying up a little bit. But if I can get a guy like Joe Mixon, can I get a guy like Alvin Kamara or Rashad White on like, hey, this is my one year uh, my one year ticket. Just identify that running back before week one um if you get lucky or even hey week five you know uh we recognize rashad white by that point was doing way better than we expected and he kind of boxed out all the other running backs there in tampa bay whoever that is on some other team maybe that's uh Kenneth Walker has completely shut out Zach Charbonnet or one of the two of them got injured or um, is it somebody, uh, is somebody in Minnesota has taken over that backfield. Uh, uh, Ty Chandler completely boxed out Alexander Madison, something like that. Um, and so we want to, we, we can save it for a couple weeks to really solidify, okay, who are we trying to get higher up on this slope that's relatively cheaper and so that's how i would kind of invest into the running back position because that gives me more flexibility to once again get a bunch of wide receivers in this range and so i'm going to keep putting my value into all these wide receivers and then okay there i need to start some tight ends this league happens to be a start two tight end league um and and so all right, I could get TJ Hawkinson, except for that he's hurt for next year. So, okay, let's take a look at Travis Kelsey. Well, what did I say earlier about the the warp? Well, we've got, I can make up these sorts of guys by getting a bunch of these guys, because this is a pretty flat range, especially when I'm looking in here. So, let's do the same thing at tight end. So we've got Travis Kelsey, we've got Evan Ingram, we've got Sam Laporta, David Njoku up here. So let's just make it up with having a bunch of these guys uh, down in this range. We can fill in a Kyle, uh, Kyle Pitts that's still worth a lot, so let's skip that for, for a moment. Logan Thomas, Darren Waller, Taysom Hill, Kate Otten, Gerald Everett, Jawan Johnson, Tyler Higby, like... Get yourself a bunch of the guys down in this range, and then fill, figure it out later. Figure out whether um uh, whether you want to pay up for for one of these guys. Maybe as the season gets on, but there's so much variance in the tight end position in terms of who ends up from tight end one down through tight end really like nine or ten each year that. I don't want to invest in saying I'm going to pay up for the tight end three price of Evan Ingram and then come to find out that next year he's tight end eight because now I've lost like so much warp. So in this case, it's about 0.65 warp, which is the whole difference between me, uh, me going like DJ Moore down to Cortland Sutton, like, that's a pretty pretty big difference in and at the tight end position people are going to hang on to Evan Ingram much much harder whereas if i just come down here i grab Dalton i could grab Dalton Schultz if i wanted or if somebody's holding on to him all right i'll grab Logan Thomas Darren Waller Taysom Hill and then guess what i can come back over here i can grab my Cortland Sutton i can grab a Chris Godwin i can I can even go down a little further, grab a Rashid Jaheed, a Brandon Cooks, a Romeo Dobbs, Curtis Samuel. Get all these guys that are 
that are these wide receivers that are going to do more for my team. You just need to have, you need to uh, fill in the positions in your lineup in the most optimal way as cheaply as possible. And so that's ultimately what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to say, all right, I have two tight end spots to fill. How many tight ends do I need in order to be able to match somebody that's up in this range? I'm not going to be able to match the one-year performance of TJ Hawkinson um, uh, from 2023 with a consortium of these guys. He just had too many spike weeks. Same with like a, a guy of like Travis Kelsey. Like you can't match the spike weeks, but the weeks that they aren't spiking, you can definitely match that with all of this. And then that person has invested so much into these players spiking that, okay, well, let, let's pretend they're, they're David and Joku truther. And they've invested a ton into getting David and Joku. They've invested in this kind of league, you probably need to spend at least a first in order to get them. All right, down here, I've got uh, Jacoby Myers, Calvin Ridley, and Tank Dell. Those were three guys that you could have gotten the last offseason or early in the season for pretty cheap values. And, and now I can take these three guys, and I bet you I'm going to get more spike weeks out of this little trio here then you're going to get out of David and Joku. And I'm going to have a better chance at hitting a floor. I'm not as vulnerable to injury. There's so many things that can go right for me by getting all of the guys in this range and letting other people overinvest in this area. So I'm going to advocate for, I bet you roster construction is going to say, uh, I'm going to go with probably six or seven tight ends. I might stretch that a little further. I might say I'm going to I'm going to utilize some of the savings that I'm going to get by investing higher up here in running back, say get five running backs, and I'm going to I'm going to get eight or nine tight ends. And so let's see what roster construction says. Roster construction says six tight ends and a seven and a half running backs. So if I invest into five running backs, I understand I'm a little bit lean there, but maybe I get I get some higher end running backs. I hold on to some extra draft capital for when injuries come or something like that. And I fill my bench with a bunch of tight ends. I also have four droppable spots to play with. Droppable in this case means speculative ads. So I listen to Eric's waiver wire podcast. I pick up all of the tight ends that he's talking about of, Hey, this guy happened to get 40% snaps last week. Like he's on the, he's on the rise. All right, go pick that guy up, put him at the bottom of your roster. And if he hits your roster, if he hits your lineup, great. If he doesn't, he was a, he was one of your slew of tight ends that you were throwing, uh, throwing at your lineup, hoping that somebody would do something. And so that's what I want to be able to do off of the, off of adjusting from this roster construction and identifying, hey, where's the ranges that I want players? So can I get myself seven wide receivers in this top 40? It might seem crazy to do. But if you are pushing running running backs off, you only have two of these top quarterbacks, you can probably get yourself seven of these wide receivers just straight off of value. And now you have a rock-solid floor because you have so many wide receivers. You have so many tight ends. You've got yourself four quarterbacks that are going to be plugged in. there, And then you've got a couple running backs. But then you have the spike potential of all these wide receivers. So when you get to weeks 15 through 17 and you're like, hey, I have to win. These wide receivers, some of them are going to end up in this range where all of a sudden now it, having a guy, let's just pretend you ended up with Terry McLaurin. There's only five running backs, five quarterbacks and three tight ends. 
that are going to be better than you. That is insane value for having just the right wide receiver. But the my whole strategy with doing this thing is we aren't trying to identify the wide receiver. Like, that's something that you go somewhere else for. You go to Mike, you go to Adam, you go uh, out elsewhere, you maybe find somebody else you like, uh, like to listen to. And you let them tell you what players to get, and you follow the roster construction and go, hey, these are the types of players I want to get. And then if you've got enough, uh, enough shots, you just take them all and some of them are going to hit. And so that's what you're relying on in order to try and win this league. So ultimately, I'm looking at a, a team where I want to have probably four to five quarterbacks, maybe five running backs that are that are starting each week. And so if one of those guys goes down, I need to have a little bit of flexibility in order to be able to go and get another one. I'm going to have a slew of tight ends and... I'm going to have a bunch of extra wide receivers too. Just because I said seven in the top 40 doesn't mean I don't want anybody outside the top 40. If if we move this over, look how many wide receivers are, are still up here that are giving you decent amounts of work. Like, all right, let's, let's, let's take, you need to be above 0.224 warp at wide receiver, just because that's a kind of a equivalent cutoff here at tight end at, tight end 34 we come all the way down here come in come in all right we have a total of 82 wide receivers that are above that threshold so you can get a ton more wide receivers maybe you can get five more above this range in, in the top 80 you can have 12 wide receivers in the top 80 or something like that now that sounds kind of kind of crazy but if you look at who who is who do i actually need to get sure quentin johnson Nobody wants him now, but he, look at that. He was, he still managed to hit that, that threshold. Robert Woods, who had Robert Woods? Michael Gallup, nobody had, or valued Michael Gallup. Greg Dortch, I'm sure he was picked up off of waivers a bunch. Brandon Johnson, I know he was on waivers because I picked him up a bunch. Um, You got Zay Jones, nobody was really valuing him. Demario Douglas was another waiver wire wonder. So you can be snatching these guys off of waivers kind of aggressively, and you just know that, hey, these last wide receivers, I'm aim I don't need to aim for the guys that are up here anymore because I already have those. I can fill out the rest of my roster with all these waiver wire darlings and just get enough of them to to punch into my lineup. So that's how I'm going to roster construct. And what I'm going to be looking for as I take this team into, I want it to be contender. How, what are my different avenues to get there? So the way we're going to look at this team itself is we're going to come back over to the South Harmon website. We're going to go over to the lab and we're going to put in, our boy Slumno's username, and we're going to check out his leaks. Before we do this, the first thing I always love to do is to go and stalk someone. So we're going to stalk Slumno a little bit, open roster, and we're going to see waivers open. And I'm going to call you out here, Slumno. You've got best ball DGEN's seven open roster slots, and your waivers are open. I don't care who is on waivers how bad you think they are you should not be wasting roster spots that is the most obvious thing that you can do as a as a dynasty manager is to always utilize your full roster size and so in 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 best ball dgens in universal experts dynasty and in kaboom you've got teams that have open roster spots and have open waivers so go and fix that and then come back here and keep going everyone else come on to uh come on to the lab and punch in your username let it tell you uh, let it tell you hey this is 
this is the kind of stuff that you need to be paying attention to. Because I know it's hard to in Sleeper. You got to click on the league, then you got to move over to the roster tab. You got to scroll all the way down, see if you've got any open roster spots at the bottom. And then you're like, all right, now I've uh, now I have to keep that in my head or go over, do the add guys waivers, and then go to the next league and do it. Uh, the lab just tells you right here, hey, this is what this is what you need to do. These three leagues, boom. So now we're gonna uh, take a look at his uh, dynasty uh, dynasty best ball league. So. I'm going to do this a little bit just to uh, just make it so everything else is gone. And we're just looking at this league. And we're going to take a look at what his actual roster is. So as I mentioned before, uh, he hit, he started with a QB horde. And then he said he made a bunch of trades. And he said specifically to look at his draft capital. And you can kind of tell that because just looking at his values compared to the rest of the league... 126% picks. That's a extremely high percentage. And with the total percentage compared to everyone else in, in the league, you can tell he has the most value on his team by far. So what we need to do is look into, hey, what should we do with that value? Should we be investing it into, into the future? Should we be um, investing it into right now? What sort of things should we be doing with it? So let's take a look at what those picks are first, just so we know what we're dealing with. We've got the 102 this year, 105, 8, 9, 12, the 202, 205, 212, and some thirds, fourths, and fifths. Um, so there's a lot to play with here. And as we're going through other positions, we'll talk through a little bit of, okay, you could maybe take this pick and take this rookie with it or trade it for some other guys or things like that. But it doesn't stop there. We've got 25 firsts, 25 seconds, 226 firsts, 226 seconds, 226 thirds. So you managed to get everything out of deep sea here in 2026 and uh, you can see here Deep Sea's picks percentage is down there at 2%. So he's leveraged everything in order to try and win now. So these, if his team falls apart, these could be looking pretty good too. So let's come back up now that we know, all right, we've got a total of 10 first round picks across the next three years to play with. You can build a lot of teams off of that. And that's not even touching the second rounders. We've got quarterbacks of Joe Burrow, Deshaun Watson. And that's really everyone that you can think of as being that four to five if you were a contender. Zach Wilson, Stetson Bennett, Carson Wentz, Sean Clifford, Clayton Toon, Skylar Thompson. Some of those guys are good. Some of them, not so much. And by good, I mean good backups to have. I would love to have Zach Wilson as a speculative backup. Same with Sean Clifford. Um, Skylar Thompson, he's the third string there. I'm, he's a cut candidate for me. Stetson Bennett, I'm worried about him because it's been how long since he's even like reported to the team facilities. Um, Clayton Toon. It all depends on whether the Cardinals keep him on as, as the backup or not. Um, to Kyler Murray, he might be fine. Carson Wentz, where is where is he going? Is he staying in L.A.? Is he going somewhere else? If he stays in L.A., I don't want Sets and Bennett anymore. So there's, there's some stuff to play around with here where, okay, these guys, some of them are speculative, and I can understand holding on to them. But if I'm competing... I don't want any of these guys. I want somebody who's going to make my lineup. And so if we were to transition this into a competitor, I'm looking to see if I can offload any of these guys for value. If not, they they might be somebody that I'm just going around the league. Hey, are you willing to give me $2 in fab? Because I bet you you drop somebody like Zach Wilson to waivers, you're going to have some people putting some money down on Zach Wilson. And so you might be able to get a little bit of extra fab for yourself and 
and we know in best ball leagues that having extra fab over everyone else is a good idea and you want to have uh, you want to have the most fab as you get towards the end of the season so you can grab all those speculative wide receivers those running backs that have come out of nowhere the tight ends that come out of nowhere things like that so if you were to transition this into a competitor I would be cutting or trading away most of these guys. And that would leave you with Deshaun Watson and Joe Burrow. So now we need to figure out, okay, how would we get ourselves to that four to five quarterback number? Well, I love the idea of going 102 and 105. Quarterback, quarterback. You will probably be able to take two quarterbacks because we're looking at... We're looking at quarterbacks, three of them going in the, the top, like, eight picks, realistically. Um, there's there's going to be so many of them going, if they even fall that far. I mean, we've been doing some uh, some mocks on Mondays, and I think we have have yet to have a quarterback, the third quarterback, fall past the 106. So, we're... You're going to be looking at definitely being able to get a really good quarterback at 102. 105, you might end up kind of in a no man's land if you're trying to get a quarterback. Maybe somebody comes to you with a trade offer and you're able to get a quarterback from that. Maybe uh, you decide to, depending on how the quarterbacks roll out in this draft, 105 could easily be a guy like Malik Neighbors. And then at 108, 109, you're picking up a a, a late uh, J.J. McCarthy, a Bo Nix, a Michael Penix, something like that. Um, and so you can fill out two quarterbacks that would be rookies right from this draft. And that still hits your, your four target number. And Deshaun Watson and Joe Burrow are both really, really good quarterbacks. They have high ceilings, and so you get two rookies, and yeah, you're gambling a little bit. Are the are they going to be good? But if you're getting two first round quarterbacks, they're at least going to play. And what was I saying? I wanted my two quarterbacks that were outside the top fifteen. They could be backups. They could be guys that are kind of speculative. There you go. There's your two kind of speculative guys. And yeah, they're probably a little better than speculative, especially uh, the guy that you're getting at 102. But now that's free money, and you have a better player than you initially uh, needed to have for roster construction. And there's nothing wrong with having better roster construction than the minimum that you need to have. So let's skip over running back uh, here, because realistically your running backs Zach Charbonnet Chase Brown being your top two those guys are you're going to need to completely overhaul the running back room maybe Charbonnet can stay but I can tell you just about everyone else they're not going to uh, to really contribute unless like maybe Chase Brown is the backup to Joe Mixon and shares some time with him or something like that but all these all these other guys, your Gray, Tucker, Vaughn, Evans, Harris, they could all just go. Chris Chris Rodriguez is the only one I would argue even keeping out of this group if you're trying to go as a competitor. So let's talk about the wide receivers. Wide receiver-wise, we've got Zay Flowers, Jaden Reed, George Pickens, Mike Williams, and Trey Palmer, Trey Tucker... Parker Washington, uh, Charlie Jones. I skipped over uh, Andre Osavis, to, but he's also there. Bo Melton, Jake, Jake Bobo, Brownlee Heath. Like you've got, you, you've got yourself the cast of. Hey, these were all the guys that I was saying you could, you could bring up, and you could have a ton of these guys who are outside of that top 40 and above that uh, top 80 range because you definitely can fit like Jake Bobo at, at the beginning of the year he was he was into that range Bo Melton was in that at the end of the year Parker Washington was in that in the middle of the year so like you've got these guys that I was saying yeah you they'd be your speculative waiver wire ads and they could 
they could fit into into this range and be helpful for you. But you just have them all on your team, and you really only have three and a half good guys. I'm calling Mike Williams a half of a guy because who knows like where he's playing, how good he is uh, after all of his injuries, whether he's going to be injured again, all those sorts of things. So you've got Zay Flowers, Jaden Reed, George Pickens. All three great guys, they all fit into that top 40. So you've got three of the seven that I was talking about that are in that top 40 that you want to get. So, how do we get ourselves four more wide receivers? Well, let's come down here. Back to these picks. I said two of these are going to quarterbacks. Great. We've got three more first that are going to wide receivers. Uh, slap those in. Now you're at six. And now this is where you start to see the amount of capital that Slumno has on this team can really allow him to turn it into a competitor if he wants. So 108, 109, 112, you can draft wide receivers. You can trade them for wide receivers. You don't you don't have to gamble on getting somebody through the draft. And then 202, there's probably still going to be somebody sitting around there too. We've got a ton of good wide receivers in this draft. We're looking at, I mean, in the actual NFL draft, it's probably going to be like six guys going. Um, unless something drastically changes across the combine or things like that, um, we've, we'll probably have some good options here at the 202. Same with at the 205. And um, as we get to the 212, okay, now it's a little iffy. I am I wouldn't count that guy as being part of that threshold. But that 202 probably could count as part of that like top 40-ish um, sort of wide receiver. And 205 would definitely be in that top 80 realm, for sure. So, we've gone through, we've gotten ourselves, let's say we get ourselves four wide receivers out of uh, out of this. Boom. Now we're at, uh, now we're at seven and a half. Because I'm counting Mike Williams as the half still. And then we've got these three, four draft picks on wide receivers. We are golden. Now we've got a wide receiver room that is that is ready to dominate, assuming everyone is uh, it is actually up to snuff. We don't have any Quentin Johnstons in our in our draft group, so keep some stuff like that in mind. This is all an ideal world. And then now all we need to do is adjust our tight ends a little bit because we've got Luke Musgrave, Luke Schoonmaker, and Davis Allen and Daniel Bellinger. That's only four. What was I saying I wanted? I wanted like eight or nine. So if we're having eight or nine guys, that's going to be... You're going to need to be getting some more guys off of waivers. Um, and so the waivers are not open currently. So all the stuff I've been talking about cuts too. You don't need to make that right now. Who cares if your roster's illegal because... It's not like you need it to to be legal in order for in order to pick up guys off of waivers or to be able to do something is something else with your team. The only reason I would say that you you cut guys is if for whatever reason you are over the roster limit and there's like a league bylaw that you have to have to be within the the roster limit or else you like lose a pick or something like that. But Stay illegal. Let let yourself draft all these guys and just hold on to as many of these guys as long as you want. Because you never know. Bo Melton might hang on in Green Bay. Jake Bobo might completely lock down the fourth wide receiver spot. Like You don't want to be getting rid of these guys before you're ready to do so. So, once waivers open back up, you need to grab yourself some tight ends. You could grab yourself a couple rookies in the draft if you want. Um, it would entirely depend on how people fall. And knowing that this is a two tight end start two tight end league, and you can see that here, um, I'm going to suspect that tight ends, good ones, are not going to fall that far. Maybe you get one with the 212, but realistically, I think that a, you're going to be looking at 
either snagging some tight ends or random ones with like your third round pick and maybe one of your fourths if you want, or um, you're going to be picking up guys off of waivers. And that's fine. You can just look at previous years. Hey, who was the backup tight end in this place? Who was the backup tight end in this place? Who got it when this tight end went down? Who ran all the routes for them uh, when they were injured? Things like that. Just pick up some speculative ads and start accumulating these tight ends back up to to the number that you want to be at. The fact that you have Luke Musgrave maybe means that all right, I can get away with like not having one guy. Maybe I can get away with seven tight ends just because if Musgrave does a little bit better next year, he's going to just be that extra little bit to your team. And so we're, we're going to, we're going to short ourselves a little bit. That's the fun part about roster construction and best ball. You're trying to cover your holes. You're, you're just trying to make sure I have two decent tight ends every single week. And I'm trying to make sure that I have two good quarterbacks every single week, two decent running backs, and then wide receiver in this league is where the money's made. And so that's what we're focusing on. So we've got, so after making all these moves that I've been talking about, we've, we've gotten ourselves up to our target wide receiver number. We're at our target quarterback and tight end number. All right. Now we need to address the running back position. So we've utilized basically all of our draft capital for 24. And we've gotten ourselves to the point where we're fine on everything but the running back. So what do I want to do? You could argue, I go ahead, I invest these 25 first, these 25 seconds, and maybe reach into this 26 well and you punch it all in and you go for a run. But I'm going to be a little bit more conservative. I tend, when I'm investing heavily into the draft rebuilding my team, to not want to then invest future years and get players without knowing how my draft picks turned out. So I might decide to invest, say, a 25 second, and I'll go see if I can buy... I don't know, James Conner, if I can go buy, maybe Alvin Kamara has fallen in in value. I can go grab Alvin Kamara off that owner. Something like that where, all right, I'll get one one guy to fill at least one of these spots pretty consistently. And Charbonnet, he's got a probably a 30% role in Seattle. Chase Brown, he might have a 30% role in uh, in Cincinnati. So, and Chris Rodriguez, we don't know how the new coaching regime is going to gonna view him, but at least towards the end of last year, it looked like he was working himself into a role in Washington too. So, maybe with the combination of those guys, that's how I fill my second spot. And yeah, I'm a little lean on running back, Maybe you can pick up some speculative guy off uh, off of waivers or one of these guys that you still have here. Oh, Deuce Vaughn is now the backup in Dallas, and so he's the guy to hold on to there, and maybe he's getting some run uh, to to spell uh, whoever they still have, if Tony Pollard's still there, or if somebody else is there. Um, so you can kind of play that light and fiddle around with it. And the reason that I want to play that light is you've got an extremely young team. And the last thing I want to do is to throw all my draft capital in and find out that everything that I did has fallen apart. If you're getting two rookie quarterbacks, if neither of them look good, that's going to be rough. You're getting three rookie wide receivers. Rookie wide receivers usually take a little bit to turn on. And so if they take a little bit to turn on, all right, well, I need to I need to reload for new wide receivers um, in order to even have a chance at competing. And so I don't want to throw everything in, play my hand, show that I'm competing, and then start turning to these te- these other teams and be like, hey, will you please, please, please take my Malik neighbors that uh, – 
that isn't doing that well, or please take my Roma Dunze that that went to a horrible landing spot and that the quarterback's not throwing to him. Like it all sorts of all sorts of things like that where rookie wide receivers bust. It just happens. Rookie players bust in general. And I would not expect to see that, oh, every single draft pick that I that I make is going to be perfect because it's not. No matter how good you are, no matter uh, how good of an evaluator you are, you're going to have s- some calls that you make that are just wrong. And so you have to be okay with that and plan for it. And so that's that's what I'm attempting to do here is I'm planning for that. So if you go this route, you uh, you to take a bunch of these rookie picks, if it works out, you now have an awesome team. It's extremely young. You have lots of good players. And when you get to the the beginning of uh, of the playoffs, when you're getting to like week 12, something like that, all of a sudden, you are now at a point where you have an extremely young team. You still have all this draft capital. And you go to whoever's an eighth, whoever's missing the playoffs that's got all these old guys on their team. And you're like, hey, I've got some 25 firsts. Why don't you give me all of your old crusties that can help me fill out my running back position, that can give me the extra wide receiver depth, and now you can invest and make a run. But if you get to the point where you... You're at the uh, you're at week twelve and man, all these wide receivers busted. These quarterbacks haven't turned on. I was trying to play all these tight ends and man, they just boxed me out of them. I didn't didn't have anybody that hit top that that was in the top forty. Well, guess what? You still have all those draft picks. Try again next year. You take it. Take your couple guys that did work out. Maybe uh. It, maybe Jaden Reed has is kept it turned on, and Christian Watson got hurt again. Jaden Reed's now the clear number one wide receiver in Green Bay, and all right, sell him for a profit. Get get another wide receiver in the top forty range, and get a first out of him. And and now uh and now you just reload it again. You and you keep playing this repeatedly, and then you now have. You have the team that is primed for if everything goes right, you have an extremely young team that is ready to dominate. And you have all the capital to be able to fix any problems that can arise over the course of the season. So that's the way that I would try to play it. However, there's another option that you can go down. And that option is the spend everything now. You can take all of these 24 picks and not make them. Take this 102, trade it for, I don't know, Russell Wilson and Deontay Johnson. Um, I don't even know if that's a combination that exists in this league, but we could look through. Let's find you a a fun trade partner. Um, So D-Verg has a team that, this looks looks like he's got some pieces, but it looks like it could also be kind of rough. And he has all the 01 picks, so I'm guessing he probably earned the 101 this year. So we can come in. Maybe we trade the 102 for Brock Purdy, and we get Jahan Dotson as well. And now that sounds horrendous, and... Yeah, it's probably not the not the best move in terms of a long term uh, long term vision, but it's still two younger guys. You're filling your a quarterback hole that you need, and you've got another quarterback who's going to be starting most likely, unless you talk to Mike, and you've got Jahan Dotson who can fill in that top forty ish wide receiver role especially with a new coaching regime uh, coming to uh, to Washington. And 
there you go. Now you've turned you've turned your 102 and you've filled two holes that you need. You can come down um, uh, to 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 Nick Bach here and let's see. Uh, he doesn't have a great quarterback for you. Let's let's see who else we can find. Um, a Daniel Jones. That sounds fun. All right, 105 for Daniel Jones and Christian Kirk. That sounds gross, but now you're filling two of those holes. You've got yourself another quarterback. You've got yourself another wide receiver. And now you're starting to build yourself that team that you need. Keep doing this a couple times. Get and Now you're at the 108, 109. Like, all right, let's, let's see if we can if we can come over and see if we can get ourselves a Terry McLaurin, can we, uh, can we take our third round pick and grab ourselves Robert Woods and Michael Gallup and just take a gamble on both of them? Um, can we come over here to, to Allen's team and can we maybe send a late first and grab ourselves a Marquise Brown and, uh, maybe get him to throw, some extra random piece that uh, get Marquise Brown and throw a, uh, an Odell Beckham on top, like something like that, where you're giving people a little bit of a bailout. Um, and yeah, maybe you're paying for it, but you're giving yourself all of these, all of these guys that are going to be able to fit those roster thresholds on your team. And once you've, once you've built that now you've used fewer of your your draft picks if you do it right you maybe still have some of these 24 seconds sitting around all right let's go grab your james connors your alvin Kamara's, your um uh, uh, anyone else who uh, i was going to say saquon barkley for some reason off the top of my head but who knows what his value is uh, his value is probably still a little too high to get him for a second. Um, but it depends on where he goes. Maybe you can get a Ramondre Stevenson or you can get yourself um, a, a Rashad White. Like guys like that were, okay, now you fill out that running back position with those second round picks and, and that third you have. And now you've built yourself your team. You've fixed all of the roster construction holes that, that you were at before and here you go now you've got yourself a competitor now that's definitely the kind of play that you could do for a if you like to run on the shorter windows um personally i like to try and build a a, a really young dynasty how young can i go while uh, while building a team that is strong. I, I like doing that when I have a lot of capital. Um, it all depends on how you play. Um, I'm I'm telling you the tools of, hey, this is how I'm looking at the league. This is what I'm looking at you need to do to turn your team into a competitor. But there's no need to rush it. But if you want to, you can. The, that's the advantage of having so much value on your team, where it says you got 200% value compared to uh, compared to everyone else. So where you've got deep C down here at the bottom with 80%. And so having having all of this value on your team gives you a lot of flexibility to do whatever it is you want to do. And so I'm hoping with all of this that you're able to recognize. All right, I need to. I need to add in some more wide receivers. I need to add in a couple more quarterbacks. And this is kind of the route that I would go down doing it. And and so I gave you two different routes. You can come up with some other ones. Like maybe the, maybe there's a different route to that roster construction that you see because you know um I don't know, you know JSEC 6030 here. The, I'm trying to see uh what this is let's pretend that's a penn state nittany lion because i can't quite tell um if that's a penn state nittany lion maybe he just has a love for penn state players so all right maybe you can 
it, maybe you can play that to your advantage and take it take advantage of oh if I trade for Saquon from somebody else I can sell it to him for for way more than he's worth because he's gonna want uh, he's gonna want to be able to relive his Penn State days or maybe I can take that Jahan Dotson and send it to him I don't know but um but you might have some things like that that you're able to take advantage of. Um, this league, I mean, it's a league with Mike, Alan Soslowski, you got J-Cap in it. Um, if you've never seen how many leagues J-Cap is in, he's in like a hundred something. Like it's, you got some sharp people in this league. I see a lot of, a lot of names that I recognize. And so you gotta, you gotta take advantage of that and, and understand, all right, I'm not going to be get getting as much done as easily as I want. So I need to just, I need to play it safe, play it conservative. You aren't going to, it, it, the only way you're going to beat the other people in your, in your league are by really uh, taking advantage of what you have dealt to you. And what you have dealt to you is the fact that you QB hoarded and successfully got out from the QB hoard without losing any of the value, and you gained all the value from that strategy that you pulled off in the startup. So, ultimately, I'm saying do what you want, but I would recommend you take some draft picks, see how it goes. See if you can build yourself a young monster dynasty. If you find yourself in in the playoffs or in the playoff hunt week 10 to 12, push in that the 25 first. Push in some of the 26 picks that you have. Allow yourself to have a run, have a shot at the money. But if it doesn't work out, take advantage of, okay, this is a bunch of young guys. I still have a bunch of, uh, of capital. Try it again next year. You still have you have enough time with all the players on your team that you're going to be able to do anything that you want, and and so there's no need to rush into it and and force yourself into a, a scenario where okay I I've spent all of my 24 picks, all of my 25s, all of my 26s, and it's August. And now your team starts to suffer from attrition. And you have a few too many running backs go down. So now you're trying to figure out how you can trade a wide receiver for another running back. And, oh man, my my third quarterback, I I went up and I got greedy. I got Trevor Lawrence. And man, Trevor Lawrence still isn't looking good. And now he's got a bum ankle problem. And it and nobody wants to have Trevor Lawrence because now he's stinky. He's had three years straight of not doing that well. And it, you don't want to get yourself lost into those narratives and and overcommit by, uh, by just spending everything all at once. So my recommendation is play it slow. If you want to have some fun with it, if you want to build yourself a competitor, I think you can do that with your 24 picks only. If you're savvy and I've given you a little bit of the blueprint talked about, Hey, this is what you need to add to your team. And, and so go ahead and try that, but you've got a few, a few different ways you can go and have fun with it and have fun. With everyone else that's stuck around this long, come and uh, sign up for your own team review, dynasty team reviews.com or just check out our website, southharmonff.com. Come join the Patreon, join the Discord, ask some trade advice questions. Uh, uh, do this sort of analysis on your own league and be like, hey, this is this is what I need to build a competitor. And 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 do all those sorts of things. Come be a part of the community, and most importantly, have fun with your dynasty team. We do this because we like it. And if if what you want to do with your dynasty team is to try to compete every year, try to compete every year. At some point, it might all fall apart, and then you got a new challenge on your hands of how can I take this team that's fallen apart and turn it around as fast as possible? Or do something like Slumno here. Join a new startup, QB hoard the heck out of it, 
so much so that you cause somebody to leave and then get out from it get all the value from all your other league mates have uh, have the league at your fingertips where you can do whatever you want and then have fun with it play with it do whatever you want so everybody out there have fun and i'll see you next time on another dynasty team review